Yes, sir. I, I did. At the, at the end, I drew a cloud without saying I was drawing a cloud. Yes. Oh, so those five, oh, that was actually, that was actually a current reality tree. I was trying to say that, yeah, the, 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 um, in the previous talk on, on drug testing, um, I asked the audience for uh, five people in the audience to tell their, their biggest problem with drug testing, and four of those problems, one wasn't, but four of those problems uh, derived from um, that, if you, if you logically look, it's actually, they were all on that, everything people mentioned were, was on the, the CRT, and it all comes down to that, that we don't have in our field actually a specific goal, which is why Ken and I kept beating on that same goal of, uh, monitoring adherence to an agreed upon treatment plan. Because what we found when we did this uh, CRT, was there are actually three goals people in our field use. First, the, the goal we put forward today, which we thought is the correct goal. Um, others um, suggested that we should use uh, urine drug testing as a way of coercing people into abstinence. And um, an another uh, group said that it was a way of mandating not an agreed upon treatment plan, but a top down, uh, uh, not, not adherence, but compliance with a mandated treatment plan. And so we actually found that nobody could come to any agreement on what frequency was, what should we test for, what kind of uh, technology we could use until we all agreed on the goal. And that, that was what I was trying to demonstrate. Sure. Yes, sir. Um, so, what, one of the things I've heard a lot today in the conference has been the idea that it's really difficult to get payers to pay for services. And right. so, you know, I've heard a lot of suggestions about ways that people might be able to work with the system and provide other services that might not be typically applicable to the treatment needs of life. Right. So we're going to add some codes right. and and bill for more stuff, and that way we'll keep our doors open and treat addiction. Correct. Right. So if we look at that as a limitation in our chain, that's an external problem, right? I mean, the fact that payers will not pay. I mean, we're providing the services. It's actually quite common. If you do a current reality tree of your situation, it's actually quite common to find that your most limiting constraint is outside of your place. So uh, for instance, a business might find that its current limiting constraint, most current limiting constraint is uh, the market. Um, so, you know, Samsung might not be able to sell more phones right now because the people who are afraid of Samsung phones. And uh, that's a problem in the market. But so when you do a current reality tree, for a problem that is outside, you need to do that person's current reality tree. So for instance, we did one where we asked, I started it by asking a bunch of colleagues in ASAM who work for insurance companies, what are the biggest problems you see with the addiction treatment industry from the point of view of you as a medical director at an insurance company? And they gave me a list of problems. Um, and I, we put them together in a, in a current reality tree which came to the final common problem that explained everything else was that the insurance companies who, who don't hear from us a coherent view of addiction. You have some people who put forward a social model, some people put forward a genetic model, some people put forward a psychological model, and they're standing there, I don't know anything about this, and I, 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 send, I look at this guy's bill and I question it and I hear this, and, and I, I call him and I hear something else, and I call him and I hear something else, and you know what that sounds like to me? They're all lying. Or, or they all don't know what they're talking about because no one can agree. So we came, we, we brought that CRT to an insurance company and said, um, this is how we understand your problem. Now everybody else who goes to them is saying, you need to pay us more. We want you to understand our problem. Um, you're not doing the right thing. We went and said, 
this is how we understand your problem. And we read them their current reality tree. And they just sat there and said, wow, you're right. That is how we see things. And by just that action, they knew we understood them and were willing to listen. Now, we could have done the arms race that you're saying you've been hearing today, that uh, they're not paying us some more, so we're going to add a lab. They're starting to not pay us for the lab, so we're going to add um, whatever, equine therapy or art therapy, or we're going to start doing um, cholesterol screening or whatever. And that actually takes us away from our goal when we start to add cons uh, things that aren't toward the goal. I mean, it's one thing if you're opening a lab because you want faster test results or equine therapy because it actually gets more people in a recovery if that's your finding. But, but when you start adding things like uh, we're going to do cholesterol testing or just things that aren't trying to get people into recovery, then you're not going to be working on your goal of more recovering people. Um, so I, I think you're right. Every, a lot of people are saying that. But that's one of those quick reaction, I have a problem, what can I do for a problem? And that would be like trying to solve that problem right there without understanding why it's there. Right? So we were just coming up with a, the, the local optimum of I don't get paid enough, when actually getting paid enough wasn't the goal. The goal was more recovering people now and in the future. And um, yes, it's necessary to get paid in order to do that, but if you distract yourself from the goal, you'll eventually not end up in a good place. Does that make sense of why people are saying that? Well, insurance companies, when you, they're going to have a, a different response depending on how you come at them. If you say to an insurance company, you are a group of terrorists who are um, nefarious people who don't want anyone to get well and all you want to do is deny care, well, come on, they're humans. Who would, keep, who would continue to listen to you? Right? And, but if you understood that there, there's a cloud there, right? I want them to pay me for this care. They don't want to pay for this care. Why do I want them to pay me for this care? I need to make money in order to keep my doors open, in order to treat people. Therefore, I want them to pay me for this care. Why don't they want to pay for this care? We have limited resources that we have to husband to uh, provide everyone with health care in a quality way. And therefore, we don't want to uh, pay for this care. But we, both of you have the same goal, which is the best possible care for all of their insureds. There's some assumptions there. One of their assumptions on, on, from their need to their want is that your treatment's not good. They, 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 why would they believe we have good treatment? They look at our outcome studies. When we do an outcome study, we pick just the people we said were successful. And then we only pick the ones who answered the phone six months later so we don't count the ones who relapsed and moved and they don't have a phone anymore. And then we say, hey, look, we've got 98% success rate for everybody who answered our phone call, who we said was good to begin with. We're not measuring their insureds. They want us to tell us how many of our insureds who came to you actually got help and are costing us less money or are in better health. So if we changed the conversation not from our standpoint, but looked at it from their standpoint, I think we'd all find them to be more, uh, more accepting.